Hello, David here, and the project for today is repair of the M16A1 rifle. If by any chance YouTube happens to drop my channel, you could find duplicates of my firearm videos on GunStreamer.com. Just look up David GPO. So in order to repair this rifle, I pretty much have to replace what was missing from the kit. The kit was missing a barrel, was missing the sear, and it was missing the lower receiver. Not long ago I did a repair on an AR-15, it was a Bushmaster, and I replaced the trigger, so I had a leftover sear from that, so I've got that sear from the Bushmaster that I'm going to add to this kit. I also had on hand this Colt 20 round magazine. This must have been sitting around here for about 20 years or so. I think the wear on this kind of matches the wear of the original M16A1. Even though I'm going to refer to this as an M16A1, it really is an AR-15 because it's going to be semi-automatic. And an M16 connotes select fire, which it, it's not going to be select fire. I've acquired some synthetic lithium grease for the barrel nut. I acquired a Magpul Bev block. This holds the barrel in place while tightening the barrel nut. And this doesn't clamp onto the receiver, it actually clamps onto the barrel so you don't torque the receiver when tightening the barrel nut. And I also acquired a Magpul Armors Wrench. Magpul is not a sponsor. Also, I've acquired a lower receiver. This is from No Dax Spud, and if you notice, there's no fence around the mag release. So this matches the receivers that were used on the Colt M16s from the 70s and 80s. However, it's not finished. It's an 80% receiver, so this needs to be machined out for the pocket for the trigger and sear. Parts in this part kit are pretty filthy. I'm going to go about cleaning them to get them ready for assembly. There is a, uh, for one thing, uh, this didn't come with a kit. That's a roll pin holder. I made a video about how to make these if you want to see that. There's one item that hasn't come in yet, and that's a barrel. To make this kit realistic, you need a 20 inch pencil shaped barrel and they're very hard to find. They're getting real expensive. I found one on Brunel's. I think it's made by Faxon. It's a 20 inch barrel, but it's not chrome line. It's nitrided. Nitrided is just as good as chrome line, but I think the barrel makers are are turning towards nitride because it's a, it's a very hard finish, and I think a lot of people are starting to favor the nitride finish. I, I'm not an expert on that. I'm, I'm not sure where it's going. I just know that Faxon is a good barrel maker and they seem to be producing only nitrided finished barrels now. So uh, that's the difference between the original barrel. It's going to have a nitride finish inside and out and it's also going to have the A4 feed ramps which was not original to the M16A1. So I apologize for, for not being true to the original design and manufacture, but I think it's outside my control. Start by cleaning out this barrel nut. There's a snap ring that's holding this together. Okay, so we have to spread out the snap ring. Got one end off and the other end on. There we go, snap rings off. Inside the snap ring is this filthy little spring. And then there's the slip ring. I see the, the flat end of the slip ring faces the star end of the barrel nut. 
goes together like that. The gas tube goes through that hole right there. Put that in a jar, flush it out with some cleaner. Put the hand guard retainer in there. Put the flash hider in there. Flash hider washer. I want to clean out the front sight. Got to figure out how to. I want to get this uh, part open. So the way to get the front sight post out is to push down on this pin. I'm using my snap ring pliers to push down on the pin. Finding the best way to do it is to use the pin of the snap ring pliers push in on the spring pin rotate the sight until the pin is pushed down just go one stop at a time then bring up the next hole until that catches on the pin and repeat This is how the front side comes apart. Move that post. And there's a pin with a spring. <clears throat> Put the trigger and hammer in there. Guess I'll fill it up with some kerosene and let it sit overnight. Check out this gas tube, it's really all carboned up. But the best way to clean this is going to be with some brake cleaner. Got a pipe cleaner down there. Got some denatured alcohol. Let's see if I can clean up the stock a little bit. It's funny that the paint came off the other side, but it's not coming off of this side. Mineral spirits is taking that paint off. Do this screw and take out the gas tube. Got a buggered up screw. Get yourself a polished ball peen hammer or polish one yourself. 
just tap those burrs back into place. Might have to clean up the groove where the hacksaw or something. I'm gonna put a drop of brake free on the outside and the inside of the tube. It's supposed to be light enough that you don't even see it. Got the front sight post installed in the front sight gas block. And according to the Army Tech Manual, there's supposed to be a five millimeter gap between the top of the ears to the top of the sight post. And I'm right on it. This is a redneck ultrasonic cleaner. Let's remove the rear sight. Be careful because there could be tiny parts that come out of here. There's that wheel. There's this detent. There's a little spring in there. Coil spring. Remove the screw and we could get the aperture out. That's what the screw looks like. It's the aperture. Little flat, little flat spring goes in convex side up. On the aperture, there's a flat side and a dish side. The flat side faces forward, and the dish side faces back. Gonna knock out the roll pin that holds in the forward assist. There's the roll pin for the forward assist. Look, there's another roll pin in there. There's a spring and plunger. In there, see that?
I don't think I'm going to take it down any further. I'm just going to soak it in kerosene and then blow it out. Everything's been clean, put back together again, except my air compressor blew the detent for this out into the neighbor's yard. I'll never find it. I had another screw up. There was a pin in there. I was supposed to drive that pin out. Instead, I just turned the screw and I broke the pin. I have a nail in there temporarily, but I'm going to have to find a pin in addition to the detent so I could get it put together properly. Let's examine this bolt. Let's pull the firing pin retaining pin. Take out the firing pin. As filthy as the rest of the parts were, this bolt and bolt carrier looks pretty clean. Gotta turn this a quarter turn. Get that out. There's the bolt. I want to see these rings. The test to see if the rings are worn is to insert them in the bolt carrier and see if the bolt falls out. If the bolt falls out, that means these rings are probably worn. And they look clean, they're not worn. The extractor is not supposed to be removed unless it's worn or broken. It appears to be in great condition, so I'm not going to try to take that out. Same with the ejector. The, uh, the way to lube the ejector is to put a pool of CLP in there, take an empty case, and rock the empty case through the ejector to push it down into the bolt face to get some of that oil circulating down in there. So that's that. This gets a light coat of oil on the outside. The bolt gets a heavier coat of oil on the outside. And this gas port gets cleaned with a pipe cleaner. So I'm going to clean it, do a light lube, and put it back together. Got some Hoppies number 9. It's interesting how clean this is related to the other parts. Make sure the gap in each ring, there's three rings in there. Make sure the gaps are not stacked on top of one another. They're supposed to be staggered so no gas escapes. And these look pretty well scattered. Forget to clean that firing pin hole. And the gas key. Make sure you shake your CLP really good. Put a couple of drops over the ejector. Make a pool. Take that empty shell casing. A 
hook it under the extractor and then rock it into the ejector pin so the oil goes down in there and wipe off the excess. A light film of CLP on the firing pin and the firing pin access in the bolt. My generous lube on the outside of the bolt, the cam pin, and the firing pin retaining pin. Put the bolt in the carrier with the extractor to the right side. I know it looks like the uh, the left here, but it's the right side of the bolt. Put in the cam pin. Turn it a quarter of a turn. Install the firing pin. And the firing pin retainer. Center that in the hole. Light coat of oil on the outside of the carrier. A light coat of oil on the top and sides of the charging handle. Make sure to pull the bolt outward on the bolt carrier. Set that in on the charging handle. assembled. Okay about my snafu on the rear sight where I lost the detent and I also broke the roll pin. The complete sight assembly is available on Brownells. Alternatively if you want just the detent and the roll pin I found it online at a company called Luth AR. That's L-U-T-H dash A-R. There they are. That's going to conclude part one of the video. I want to thank you for watching. And part two is going to take a while because I need a barrel and I need a, a jig for completing the lower receiver. So the jig is on back order for about four weeks. Bye now. Gun owners of America. 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 If you're sitting at home and you contribute to the gun owners of America, stop giving. The only no compromise gun group in Washington. They're tougher than the NRA, aren't they? That's right. The NRA is bad, really bad. Gun owners of America is even worse than bad. We do not support gun control. We do not support gun control fully loaded. We do not support gun control light. We have opposed every gun control at the federal level. After days of silence following the Las Vegas attack, the NRA announced it was backing new regulations on bump stocks. Interestingly enough, while the NRA is saying maybe we should regulate, restrict these bump stocks, Eric Pratt says no.